What's up, y'all? Dale, NewEraBarbering.com. Welcome back to another customer interview. Today, I'm joined by Brian, who I just learned was actually 19 years old. Brian's a barber from Memphis, Tennessee. I thought he was 20, 21, but uh, Brian, I appreciate you for hopping on this call. No problem. Yep. So, Brian, um, actually joined, when did you join? August? Uh, into the Elevated Mentorship Program? Late July, mid-July. Okay. Late July, mm-hmm. mid-July. I know you started, Brian, you started at like 25 bucks when you first, when you were in the program. We bumped you up to 50. Now you're at 75. I really want to make sure like, you know, kind of go through the journey of like your process, not only through the program, because you went from 25 to 75 in three months as a 19 year old in Memphis, Tennessee. Before we kind of dive into that, um, take us through at least like who you are, your background, how do you get into barbering, kind of the journey up before we met. Well, I'm Brian Jones, of course. I'm a barber from Memphis, Tennessee. And I kind of got into barbering because growing up, I played I played football, and I was a pretty good quarterback. But I got tired of getting hit, so I wanted to play basketball. But my leadership skills didn't transfer over to basketball because it was it was like less roster spots. But I would always make the team, but I wouldn't play. And I just had so much potential, and I just be thinking so much, and I just never got a chance to put that like like showcase my talents of what I had to offer. And like my eighth grade year, I was supposed to be the starting point guard, but uh, the opportunity got took from me and I was forced to sit there on the bench my senior year and just watch all my friends just live out my dream. So it kind of, it kind of made me realize like it's a, it's one grown man dictating my whole future and dictating all of my happiness. And I was no longer a leader no more. So once I got to high school and I realized that that wasn't going to work out, I just walked away and I cried and told my dad, I said, it's over with. And, you know, I went into a a shutdown mode, but I got put in the barbering class um, my 10th grade year. So I was just in there going to sleep, just in the corner, put my head down, going to sleep. But when we had to actually pick up the clippers and cut on each other, the cut wasn't good, but I was like, like Toby McGuire and I got when he got bit by the spot. I'm like, I don't know what it is, but something feels right about this. I kind of felt like I could be the man again, so I just kept going. And as I kept going, I got around the other barbers in the class and got to linking with my teacher, and I felt like I had a purpose to wake up with. It wasn't going to school; it was to get better to test out some new blades, ask questions, and I had a reason to skip class. Because nobody wants to go to school, but knowing that I had the potential to actually make money, like $5 here, free, but just walk out of school with some money, I kind of felt good. And um, I never really just wanted to be a barber, but I didn't, like I said, I didn't know what the future had in store for me. So I was just, just doing it, like the repetitions and getting around the environment and seeing what it had to offer. I was like, it's, it kind of feels right. And I just started getting good so fast. And I met this uh, one guy. We were real close now. He was cutting since he was in the eighth grade. And he became my barber. And I was telling him, I don't, I don't want to be a barber. He was like, why not? And I was like, I really wanted to be a barber at that point, but I didn't want everybody to know my plan because it seemed like once I wanted to do something, that's when other people wanted to do it. But it it got to a point where I really just couldn't even hide the passion no more for it. So I started embracing everything. And my teacher had put us in his barber shop on weekends. But um, his was percentage. Like we had to give him a percentage of our haircuts. So like my ten dollar cut would be six, like the fifteen would be like seven or eight, and then the twenty would be like twelve. And I was like, I'm getting too good to be, you know, getting my money ate up like this. So, um, I was trying to get to drive, and it was this old school car that my grandma had, and um, it wasn't working. But when I needed it to work, they got it fixed, and. I was getting laughed at at school my senior year, but after school, I would just get in the car and just hit the city and do house calls. And I wouldn't even go to the shop no more. I would just, I was charging 20, so I charged 30 for a house call fee. I was going 
downtown to the University of Memphis, I was just going everywhere and just making garbage content, just dropping it. But people were liking it, and I got my name out. And um, then the shopping man now, he um, gave me an offer that I couldn't refuse, and it was branched off from the school and all the kids at school. So I kind of was able to write my own path, and it was just me and him. And that's when COVID hit. So when COVID hit, you know, we were all shut down, but um, they were asking me to stay in the house to not uh, get sick. But I had to get up and go, so I just masked up, put my gloves on, and I was cutting the music producer at the time, like one or two times a week. So I just kept cutting him, and I had started getting who I know would probably be safe with the uh, COVID precautions and stuff like that. And that led to me just working every day. And I started taking clients over. Then when the shop opened back up, everybody just started coming to the shop. And that's when I got my license in last November. Hmm. And I was full-time, so I just was running it up. And then before you know it, I was pulling 15-hour Friday shifts and waking back up the next morning at 8 a.m. and just killing myself. And then this summer, I was looking at other barbers my age range, and I was comparing their booking times and their price and our skill set. And I'm like, something is off. Because how is this guy charging 60? I know he's in, he might be in Texas or whatever, but I don't think that that's a big deal. I don't believe that I have to leave Memphis to grow a good business or have a name. Cause that's what everybody always tells me. They always say, you got to move to Atlanta or you got to move to Texas. I'm like, if I move from Memphis, my purpose is gone. I have to do it here, and I don't believe I have to go anywhere else. So, And, of course, I seen Jay Fady, and I was like, let me go on his book, and he charges 200 I'm like, I mean, this ain't right. So I had put on my Snapchat, Now I was kind of fed up because I'm at 20 He charges, but... This and twenty times more, or something like that. I'm like, yeah, this ain't this ain't gonna cut it. So I was real furious about it, and I had other barbers in the city that was sliding up, you know, complaining with me and stuff like that. And I just was um on YouTube watching the haircut tutorial, and then the ad popped up, and then like my jaw dropped the whole ad. I have never watched the ad that long before, but I watched the whole ad. You got talking about the hamster wheel. I'm like. Yeah, so I got the follow up video and um booked the um the uh Zoom call with you and I had called my friend and I was like, This is uh this group that um gonna help me raise my prices, da 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 and like, Okay, go for it. Then we got on the call and we chopped it up and you saw something for me that I had never even seen. It was so scary. And um we had discussed the process of getting in and I kind of froze up. However, you know, they always say when something scares you, that means like, that's what's next. You got to go ahead and jump into this. So I did. And I haven't looked back since. Mm. So, I mean, that, that was like a really quick timeline. So like you, you weren't like even, you're maybe in the barbershop, maybe like a whole year license wise. Right. Yeah. Maybe a little uh, bit under November that. November made one year. Yeah, yeah. So, like, because I know it was in July. So, basically, like, maybe six to eight months overall. Um, mm-hmm. And, w- like, for you, were you just, like, burnt out from, like, the long days? Or what was, like, the real, like, what was kind of going on that made you want to, like, again, look into this and change? Was it more of, like, because you saw Jay fade it? Or were you, was there something going on for your circumstance? I feel like I was cheating myself. Because they always throw out the phrase, you got charge what you're worth. Mm. But... You know, people say that and they don't even come and pay for it or support it anymore, but it was more so me just getting in the game, being money hungry, and I realized that money, the money wasn't going to help me feel better and it wasn't going to help me get more sleep. Like, something had to change. Like, it was times where I couldn't even move my arm to the other side of my body because it hurt so bad, feet hurting, my friends want to go out, and I'm just burnt out like on my breaks i'll go home and take a nap and come back and didn't even eat and they're like where you go you want to take you a nap like they'll make fun of me for it, but 
I was really burning myself out. I was tired of cutting kids' hair, and I was tired of all the clients just wanting a hairline done. I just I want to cut hair and love it again. I stopped loving cutting hair that fast hmm. just by cutting that many people. And was that more just like again to like the mentality like in Memphis? Or I'm assuming like people that you were around or knew they they legit just told you like you have to move to a bigger city if you want to charge more. Like this is it was, did they think like that with the cap at, like where you're at is 25 or like you can't go up to like a 75 100 bucks or what was like the mentality? Yeah, the mentality is um, you know I cut you. You have kids, I cut your kids, so they get up and they have kids. And you just keep cutting families and just keep spreading out. And you cut more people. You don't raise your price, you just cut more people. You mm. do eyebrow arches, you do all this stuff. So I was doing shampoos and facials and stuff. It was cool, it was different for Memphis, but nobody nobody really charges over. $30. Okay. And I guess for you, like what, what, what was like kind of like the general feedback? Cause I know when you, when you jumped in, like, I remember looking at your business, we kind of went through like some strategy, like, all right, what's going on? What, like, what's the challenge? Um, and I remember you were, I mean, you even sounded, I remember that called you, you were just sounded like burnt out, tired. I, I, you were like kind of nervous too. But I was like, all right, like we should probably like bump you up to 50 and work at that price point. I mean, for you, were you just more nervous about that? Were you more nervous about changing? Cause you know, like coming into this, this is going to be a big thing in your business. Like, what was kind of going through your head? Um, it was more so adapting to the program because hmm. it's more. It's a lifestyle. It's not just. It's not just some bull crap. It's a real lifestyle. You're not committed. You know, getting no results. And I had joined that little Q and A the first night, and you were talking to Anthony and one thing I always remember Anthony was like he was on his streak of joining each Q and A. And I was like, these people are committed. And it was more so commitment than anything, just changing my boring life to really go hard and program myself to be a dog. So that was what it was. And you were like, oh, when you told me to go to 50, I was like, I'm going to have to stop cutting certain people. And so you got like, to lose those feelings. So all every price raise is a mental battle going up. Every day is a mental battle in this program. If you want to keep going up, you have to be a dog and know when to cut it on and cut it off. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think that's, that's one thing I see a lot too is like, you know, a lot of people think it's like one price raise and you're set for life. And it's like, I, I talk about this mm-hmm. in the most recent Q&A calls. Like that's, that's like the first lap of the race, right? You have like, if your goal is like 100, 150, like I, I know you're at 75 right now. I, I think there's always like that, that moment of where you like kind of like, feel calm and accomplished, but it's like, dude, there's so much more you have to build. There's another problem that's going to pop in the business for you, right? What have you at yep. least kind of learned, like, that's different from, like, how you're running your business now versus, like, before the program overall? Repeat that question one more time. Yeah, like, like what's, I guess, different about, like, yourself or how you run the business, like, now versus, like, before you joined the program? Uh, For one, the time. I was cutting in 20, 30 minutes at first, and that was a whole hour. So... Um, everything is a bit more slowed down and it gives me, like I said, my passion came back for, I'm actually creating hmm. artwork, you know, on the media and on somebody's head. And I don't feel like it's such a hassle anymore. Back then it was, I didn't really even want to do it, but now it's like, I'm ready to go try a new technique or something like that. And it's no... I'm, most of my problems are gone that I had at $25. Like, um, my clients not having transportation, like a uh, $75 client, nine times out of 10, he's going to have his own ride. You know, they're going to be more up to date on how the procedures work and stuff like that. Cause that's why they come spend this kind of money for, you know, the doctor's office type of, you know, uh, service. You get in, you get out, you book all that kind of stuff. So it wasn't no phone nagging where you got to get all these texts and calls and can you squeeze me in? It's just way more peaceful. I can, I can come in and be creative and not have to have a daycare or, you know, just put up with a whole bunch of mm. other people. Yeah. Well, like again, to the, what was like the biggest problem, I guess, before joining? Like, I, I don't know if we went over this on your call, but like, was it more be- like, um, uh... You had you you had an issue of like acquiring new clients at higher price points or like what was the main issue we were focused on at first with you? 
Um, it wasn't even a main issue. You had asked me how many, you know, people I had, like, coming a week, and you heard that number. You was like, yeah, go ahead and schedule your price raise because I had enough $50 clients that were paying, but I just had to jump to where a lot of them fell off so we can get that ground to see where we need to grow from. Mm. So at that point, then it was acquiring more $50 people. Okay. So like at first it was just like get like get our damn time back because like again too like mm-hmm. I I, th- I think I do remember like I was like dude we like even if we like put it in like media and like do marketing like there's no room right now because I think you're like booked out how far in advance were you booked out like a couple weeks or something like that. Um, I don't I want it to be like that, but mm-hmm. it's never like that here unless it's a holiday. Yeah. But you know Monday it'll be slow Tuesday then as we go by they just keep coming up. Yeah. Like, so I'll eventually be booked out for the week. Yeah. I think I think that's like another misconception with like a lot of barbers like focusing on being like booked out weeks in advance like or rebook. I hear a lot of barbers always like, oh, like, I don't know if this is like same like maybe that you got told, but like a lot of barbers like think the game is like rebooking clients. It's like, look, as long as the client books overall, and you get like 120, 150 clients every single month. Like you're going to be solid. Like don't worry about like the retention rate so much more so than the acquisition part. And I, again, for you, like, I think it was more, I mean, you knew how to get clients at 25. Clean cut, you were just, not rushing, but you oh, were yeah. like 20 minute cuts, dude, that's like ridiculous. It was more, I think it was more like the, um, how do I get clients at 50 bucks? How do I get clients at 75? Because what were you doing prior to get clients overall? Was it just like super organic for you? Um, it was some of everything. Like I said, um, I took over doing um, the corona thing when we were all shut down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was doing a lot of house calls when I was in school, so I was convenient to everybody. And I was cutting in high school from 10th grade, so I had a real big foundation. So, Okay, so just like yeah. build up clients like word of mouth over the years, and you just kind of like kept prices at 25 bucks. Their friends probably told their friends. It, it just like you didn't, you really didn't have to focus on new client acquisition. The clients were already there. You were like already booked out. It yeah. wasn't even like a, a thought for you, but in order like to scale up like obviously you thought all right cool i don't know what the hell i'm gonna be doing with this thing mm-hmm. you okay. know when you're at 20 dollars like the pool of clientele is huge but the higher you go you will need to cut though you know exactly yeah you only again to like i think people forget like they think you need like 600 clients on like you know your list it's like look at the end of the day every yeah. single month you need only to cut about 120 150 clients every single month you know, at 100 bucks, that's already like, let's say you cut 120, it's already 12K. You're probably going to get 3K in tip. That's already like a 15K per month business right there. Now it's just like, mm-hmm. how, how are you going to get those clients into the business consistently, right? Um, new client wise. I guess for you too, like, what's, I mean, like, because you're 19, dude, right? Again, I thought you were a little bit older, but you're 19. What's, I mean, what, what's, what's up with like at least your overall idea of like being so forward thinking, wanting to do more in the business, wanting to grow more? Because I think a lot of 19 year olds, especially like, who are barbers, they get stuck. I'm not going to say they get stuck, but they make some good money. Maybe they're doing like the 20, 30 minute haircuts and they're just like grinding it the fuck out. What was like, what made you think differently and like want to go a different path instead of just like, all right, I'm just going to stick it this out and kind of like stay complacent. Well, um, my dad, because he, um, he grew up in a bad part of Memphis. So he got, he gives me that, that outlook from, that side of life and my granddad you know he has a lot of knowledge and wisdom so they kind of pour into me on two different sides and i've seen the barbers that cut in 20 minutes and they make a decent amount of money and they go buy the fast cars uh every new jordan with the matching outfit and just be flashy and stuff like that but uh i saw enough of that and i don't want to have the people looking up to me doing the same thing so that's why i go back to the school and give away all the top of line clippers for free i go help them out and i i tell my teacher like i want this car but i'm not gonna get it right now i want to be a better role model i want to i want to give them something to look up to because i feel like now everybody's like eyesight is on me and they realize that it's possible i have broken Mm. those barriers in within months so it's about it's always in me to want to be flashy and do stuff, but at the same time, 
I realize that nothing is guaranteed and my dreams do expire. So I have to, I have to maintain what I'm doing and with the way the, the world is going, you never know what's going to happen. So I just want to kind of keep my money and kind of invested in whatever it is, the new clippers, a book to read, like this program, like I can get this stuff later, but right now the world, nothing is guaranteed. So I have to just keep all my supplies right here and just keep building. Yeah. I think, I think it's a great like principle overall too. Like, cause like, um, one of my mentors, uh, actually, I mean, kind of reinforced this into me. Like, you know, when you, when you start making like money, like everybody's like, Oh man, what should I invest in? Should I go into crypto? Should I go into this? I'm like, look, well, my mentor was basically like, look, you can get all that stuff right now, right? But like, there's gonna be a new flashy thing, right? A couple years mm-hmm. down the road. And I think it's always better to, the, to just invest in your either skills or like improve yourself to become a better business. That way when the new flashy thing comes in, instead of only throwing like a thousand dollars at it, you could throw 10, 15, 20, 50 K at it and then you could see it grow if yep. you want to. Or you just have a, you don't even, you don't even like bat an eye at the new thing because you already have a great business already yourself or you have lots of money in the bank. And you built yourself up to be on a solid foundation instead of like, cause I think a lot of people, especially Dave, man, they're just trying to hope and pray that that crypto like gets them out of a situation. I'm like, dude, you should have been on that early, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, mm-hmm. I think, I think, um, I mean, I, I don't know anything about crypto, but that's always something I've always uh, like learned, especially when you're young making money. Like, don't worry about the car. Like, you can get all that shit later. Focus on like your business. If you run a business, at least, you should focus on improving your skill set to even push the business even further rather than flex and then maybe like get lazy get sidetracked stay at the same level and then you get passed up a couple years down the road right because i think i'm sure you've seen that too from people who are like more flashy they get you know somebody who's hungrier than them can easily pass them up overall right and then it's kind of like yep. you know then it's like oh wait what the fuck what how do they like how do they do this like how do I, you, you fell asleep at the wheel dude right um for you, did that kind of like, because I know that, that you said about being more of an inspiration and also a role model. Do you think that kind of stemmed more from like your sports background or for you, do you, did you always like have that idea about when you went into the barber industry, that's who you wanted to be? No, nah, I never knew that I was going to do this, but uh, like you said, it kind of stemmed from the sports background because like I had an opportunity to be the starting point guard, but it was gone hmm. just like that. So I was like, looking back, I don't ever want to have that feeling ever again. Man, like, I got a tattoo on my back that says undeniable. Hmm. Like I won't be denied ever again. I'm going to get denied again, but I'm not going to get denied again at yeah. the same time. I'm going to keep putting in the work. So if it's in my power, it's not going to happen. I think that's such an incredible lesson too. Like that, I feel like that, um, that's like a building block or a foundation. Like that one moment, like you talked about like, another, you didn't want another man to dictate your success or like, you know, dictate how your feeling was. And it kind of like sets you on a path of like, all right, cool. What direction in life am I going to go down? Barbering. Is it the best thing to do? You didn't even want to fucking do it at first. Right. And then, you know, just kind of like going down the path of like, okay, cool. This is what they say I can do here, but I know I can do better and start looking out for mentors or start looking out for, to invest in things, start building the business up. I think that's like, I think that everybody should have that moment because I mean, I I know we talk about it a lot in terms of like, I had a similar situation happen where when I came into barbering, I was like, I never want to feel this like feeling of like embarrassment of like, I just fucked up because then you start second guessing yourself, right? Like, man, did I do something wrong? Did I not do enough? Did I not work hard enough? Did I not take advantage of this opportunity? Um, And I think those lessons are like so important, especially if people played sports um, and didn't do well in them, obviously, like or go where they want to go. I mean, you kind of just have to like r- remember that same thing of like with your business as a barber, like these, like we talk about a lot, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Um, I, and I guess like for you that like one moment, I mean, did it shift overall, like your work ethic Did did you just feel like, I know you talked about like, again, too, you didn't want to let another guy, another person like dictate your future. Did you start like putting more importance on the time that you had? Did you start taking your work more seriously after that? Like, what was the mental shift for you after that moment? Um, Just stay consistent, hmm. really. Like that one percent a day mindset. Because when you're a barber, like like I tell my friends, like everybody can't cut hair, Brian. Or, well, I don't have to clock in. I can just stay in the bed and have everybody booked and just oversleep and just not come to like to work. But I have to wake myself up to go to work. I have to go get lunch. I have to. It's it's harder, you know, running the business than having like a, a um 
for the time to clock in and stuff like that. Because like yesterday, like what Friday, I was asleep, but I only had one client for four thirty. But I woke up and it was a client book for nine. Like you have to just be able to have that motivation in yourself to just just click on and off. Yeah. So it's more so just staying consistent at it because if you like I said, you just keep building. You can't fall out, but you just stop building. Somebody's going to come and take your spot. And with us being our own bosses, can't can nobody, like if my shop manager, like if he put me out the shop today, I still got my hands. I still got my brain. I'm still me. I'm a walking brand now. I don't need anybody. So, you know, that's the mindset. Like a coach can't bench me no more. Mm. Like I'm the coach and the player and the GM and the owner. And the people who do the taxes, um, I'm the whole franchise right now. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And I think I, I think even more important, don't just be consistent. Like, be consistently great, too. Like, yeah. a top tier. Because I think a lot of barbers, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll say, oh, I'll just be consistent. And then just go in and cut hair every day. And just, like, again, be super passive with it. Hope and pray their business grows. Like, no, no, you got to be consistently great. Like, um because it's a lot of work to build. I mean, you, you, I think from your, your standpoint now, being inside the program, it's a hell of a lot more work than you anticipated. And especially like oh, what yeah. you were doing beforehand in terms of just like, again, tracking, figuring out what the problem is, solving the problem, improving the business model, figuring out where the bottlenecks are at um, versus just going in, look at your schedule, you're fully booked out and just cut the hair, right? And then just go home, do it again. It's, it's completely different. Like, again, I think of it like, we, like you, you kind of transformed yourself from being focusing on just cutting hair and to focusing on how to be the best business operator you can be, right? And improving the business yep. model overall. Um, I guess for you, like, you know, for maybe like a piece of advice like you would give to somebody, maybe that was in like your similar situation before you joined the program, right? What piece of advice would you give to them? And just, um, I guess, kind of speak on that a little bit. Just take a second to really like look at yourself and see what happened in your life. That, that really makes you uncomfortable when you think about it and find the reason why you do what you do, which in this case would be cutting hair and go hard enough to where you can eventually solve those problems and just use that fuel and just go harder and don't worry about, you know, how much anything is cost when it comes to what you really want out of life. Cause it, at the end of the day, it's just a number and some paper. You're going to get it back. So like I tell all my young friends, just invest. I say to where you want to be at in life, and they say, I want to be this, this, and that. Like, but you don't want to buy this pair of clippers. You want to wait. You have to invest. It's just paper. It's just currency. It's going to come back. As long as you're not blowing it off on some drugs, it's going to come back. Like, invest and really just dig deep. Absolutely. I guess for you to... Um... Because I know 19 years old, we finished off, and again, we went from 25 to 75 in three months. What, I mean, what, what are your plans at least for the next year? Like, what do you have planned? What are you like, because um, I know I asked Paris. I didn't even know he was like wanting to like branch off and do, do other things once he hits 100. Do you have other plans? Or what is like your, I guess, next goal that you're trying to achieve? Um, after reading some books, you know, when we went to 75, I had more time. So I've been reading and I... um. I have an interest in finances, so I kind of want to lock in on the history of taxes and all the, you know, the stuff that other barbers don't think about. Because, like I said, in Memphis, they don't, the tax situation is different from other places as far as how barbers deal with taxes. And I kind of want to, like, crack that down to where people don't have to be scared of taxes. And I get a lot of DMs asking on how to, um, cut hair and lessons and stuff like that. So I kind of want to own my um, my own class, online class, and just drop um, like monthly videos like Vic Blend does, and you know have that in motion, and get my own suite and just really just take advantage of my skill set in life because everybody say invest, but nobody knows what to invest in. But I think if I just branch out more I think I'm going down the right path so I kind of want to help people learn how to get the skill set and um yeah you kind of inspired me too though because it's it's a good feeling seeing that everybody is the same 
Like everybody has something in common because we're all so different, but we just got to help each other. So I'm down to help people as long as they are down to invest, like you said. Well, you didn't say it, but you kind of pulled it out of us. You know, once you invest, the possibilities are endless. So I kind of want to give back. Oh, yeah. I, th- I think you accomplish anything, dude. I mean, like, look, you're 19 years old, like, really good head on your shoulders in terms of you know what you want. You know what you know what direction you want to go. And I think also, too, you understand, like, you're very aware, too, right? Like, you know people are, like, you know, looking up to you. I, I, I get people all the time, like, whoa, like, mm-hmm. that guy, the guy from Tennessee, he's, like, got from 25 to 75 in three months. You know, I'm like, yeah, dude's mm-hmm. young, too. He's a killer. So I think, like, look, just stay focused on things. And I think, you know, next year you're going to, if you want to go up to 150, 200, I think that's more than capable within your power. Um, I yeah. Just, I mean, just, just stay focused would be always the main thing. Um, again, thank you for coming on to the interview today, dude, and kind of sharing your story, kind of sharing who you are. Um, again, how can people find you? Like, what's your Instagram handle um, and all of that stuff? Oh, it's W-H-E-A-T-H-E-A-D underscore Wheathead. I had to spell it out because people think it's weed. So <laughs> got it. Going to spell it out. Wheathead. Yeah. Got it. Yep, mm-hmm. absolutely. So uh, make sure to follow Brian on his journey. Again, too, Brian, thank you so much for um, hopping on here. And then we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll talk on the Q&A call, too. Oh, yeah, for sure.